Eukaryotes are newer than prokaryotes, and we're going to talk a little bit about how they evolved. So, because we do know some things about their evolution. So for one thing, there's a lot of evidence that two organelles inside of eukaryotes, the mitochondria and the chloroplasts, were once bacteria that could use oxygen for aerobic respiration, in the case of mitochondria, and could photosynthesize, in the case of chloroplasts. These small bacteria, scientists believe, were endocytosed by a larger fermenting cell. And rather than being digested, they began to live symbiotically within the fermenting cell. Now, why do we think this? Well, all eukaryotic cells can perform fermentation, and they do not require any organelles to do it. Fermentation is a very simple and inefficient method of metabolism. And uh, all cells can do it, doesn't require the use of any organelles, and it doesn't require the use of oxygen. So even your cells can do it. If you, if you lose your access to oxygen, like you're drowning or something, your cells will start to ferment, and that keeps you alive just a little bit longer, even though it's not as much energy produced. So, um, so the first line of evidence is that eukaryotic cells can perform fermentation. They all can, and they do not require any organelles to do it. Also, if mitochondria and chloroplasts were once bacteria that were endocytosed, you would expect these organelles to have two membranes around them. And this is because they would have started with their own membrane. So if you look here, see this little dark line around this little green bacteria, this little cyanobacteria, which we talked about first week. They create the oxygen, most of the oxygen for the Earth. So it's got this little dark line that's its own cell membrane and then it starts to become endocytosed by the larger cell and so when we looked at we just looked at endocytosis right that would create you know a pocket the big larger fermenting cell creates a pocket brings in this smaller bacteria to eat it that's going to create a second and then that pocket's going to pinch off that's going to create a second membrane around it so you would expect if these two organelles were used to be bacteria that were endocytosed, they would have two membranes around them. That's because they would have started with their own membrane and picked up another membrane on their way in from the little membrane pocket formed around them by the larger cell during endocytosis. And indeed, mitochondria and chloroplasts both have that double membrane. So all larger cells can ferment on their own. Yet, you know, all you, I should say all eukaryotic cells can ferment on their own. They don't require these organelles to do it, and yet they have these organelles anyway for energy production. Um, and also the early Earth, of course, you know, the very, very first cells would not have been capable of aerobic respiration because initially there was no oxygen on the planet. So first there was no oxygen on the planet. You would have had a lot of fermenters. Then, you know, you had these cyanobacteria that were capable of of photosynthesis. They create a bunch of oxygen. The earth over a long, long period of time, the atmosphere begins to fill up with oxygen. And then, uh, then you have aerobic respiration that's possible. But the first cells would have been fermenters. And then these other, you know, um, uh, aerobic respiring bacteria would have evolved later. All right, so let's look at all of these. Uh, the There's also many more lines of evidence. So let's look at all of the evidence because that by itself doesn't seem that convincing, right? So you have this double membrane around them, which could have been gotten from being endocytosed. And by the way, large cells do endocytose larger cells for food. Our white blood cells do that to pathogens. And there are examples today of human pathogens that once they're endocytosed, they don't get digested. They have certain um, proteins or certain chemicals that prevent fusion between the lysosome, the digestive organelles, and the uh, food vacuole that they were brought in inside. And so they can then just sit inside the larger cell and replicate, replicate, replicate. Okay, so we do have examples of that happening today. All right, so, but also in addition to that, mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own DNA, while the DNA coding for all the rest of the cell is housed in the nucleus. So in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell, you find the DNA, the genetic blueprint, to build all of the cell except for building the mitochondria, and in the case of plants, building the chloroplasts. Those organelles have their own DNA, which is their own genetic instructions to build themselves. And not only do they have their own DNA for their own proteins, but their DNA is a single circular chromosome, just like 
the DNA that you find in bacteria. They also have bacterial ribosomes. We talked about how both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have ribosomes, but the ribosomes are different. Bacteria have much smaller ribosomes than eukaryotes have. So uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own DNA. The DNA is a single circular chromosome, the way it's structured in bacteria. They also have their own ribosomes to build their own proteins from their own genetic instructions. And those ribosomes are the same as the ribosomes you find in bacteria, in prokaryotes. Finally, during cell division, all organelles grow and divide in synchrony, except for the mitochondria and chloroplasts. So when you have a eukaryotic cell that's going to make daughter cells, you know, whether that's to make more tissue to grow a human or to just make a larger colony of single-celled eukaryotes, um, those cells, they're going to have to grow, divide, grow, divide, grow, divide. And all the organelles will grow and divide together in synchrony except for the mitochondria and chloroplasts. Mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own rate of division that's independent from the rest of the cell. So these are, you know, when taken together, taken all together, these are extraordinarily convincing. This is extraordinarily convincing evidence for what we call endosymbiosis theory. Endosymbiosis theory, so endo means within or inside, symbiosis means together living. So endosymbiosis theory is the theory that mitochondria, your mitochondria, oops, and your chloroplasts are actually, or were once free living bacteria that got endocytosed by a larger cell way, way, way back at the beginning of life on Earth. And instead of getting digested, they began living and replicating inside that cell symbiotically. And so they provided that larger fermenting cell with special tools, with special powers. The aerobic bacteria could use oxygen to extract energy from food, which, is, which we'll see next week is incredibly more efficient than fermenting. And of course, the chloroplasts, well, that cyanobacteria is really good at making sugars out of sunlight and carbon dioxide. You don't even have to find food if you have a chloroplast. You can just make it out of basic, basically nothing. So those are really special things that those, you know, special tools that those smaller bacteria were able to provide the larger fermenting cell that in ingested them. So endosymbiosis was a really important step in the evolution of eukaryotic cells uh, uh, because these the ability to create your own food or the ability to use oxygen to extract energy more efficiently, you can't have multicellular life without that. Because you may notice that you can't live off of fermentation alone, can you? you can, every cell in your body is capable of fermenting without, you know, create, extracting energy food with, from food without the use of oxygen. And yet you die without oxygen. And the reason is fermentation is so inefficient, it is simply not enough to sustain a huge, complicated organism like yourself. The only way to sustain a huge, complex organism like yourself is to be able to use oxygen to extract energy from food because oxygen allows us to extract massive quantities of energy from very small amounts of food, as we will explain next week in the metabolism chapter. So with these superpowers provided by these early symbioses, diversity of life could really take off and multicellular forms could evolve.